Hi, my name is Dr. Riya from MGM Medical College, Navi Mumbai, and my paper is on role of CCT in acute right lower quadrant pain. Introduction, right lower quadrant pain is one of the most important causes of visit to the emergency department. The usual assumption is that this pain represents acute appendicitis. However, other causes beyond appendicitis involve, that involve the ileocecal region, such as cecal malignancy, ileocecal intersusception, mucosal, appendicular abscesses, complicated ovarian cysts, and uretric stones can also cause right lower quadrant pain. Acute appendicitis is one of the most common causes of acute abdominal pain. The most common condition that requires abdominal surgery. Moreover, patients with alternative abdominal conditions may present with clinical findings indistinguishable from acute appendicitis. Important advantages of CT are that it depicts the appendix, the periappendicial tissues and other intra-abdominal structures. Thus, CT allows the radiologist to confidently exclude appendicitis if normal appendix is visualized and to diagnose appendicitis if the appendix is normal. Multi-detector CT is the modality of choice to confirm or exclude appendicitis and to help you detect an alternative pathologic conditions that cause right lower quadrant pain. The aim of the study is to discuss, in, to discuss the main imaging features of these conditions using multi-detector CT as a diagnostic tool to review the surgical and non-surgical pathologic conditions that cause right lower quadrant pain. The objectives are to assess accurate differentiation between complicated and uncomplicated appendicitis and to assess the accuracy of MDCT in diagnosis and preoperative evaluation of alternatives of acute appendicitis causing right lower quadrant pain and associated complications. This is a retrospective study done in MGM Medical College over a period of six months and a total of 50 patients were included in this study. And it was performed on a 128 slice CT machine. Whenever possible, detailed clinical history was obtained with special emphasis on the patients on the pain location, radiation, as well as onset duration, severity, and quality of pain. Each scan was evaluated independently for the presence of inflammatory processes, associated complications, and for the detection of other findings other than acute appendicitis. The first case is a 16-year-old female presenting with right iliac mucosa pain, nausea, and vomiting. The appendix is dilated and fluid-filled, showing mild abnormal wall thickening and enhancement, and with mild periappendicial fat stranding, suggestive of acute appendicitis. CT signs of acute appendicitis include appendicular diameter of more than 7mm, 7 mm, appendicial wall hyperenhancement, neural stratification of the appendicial wall, appendicular lids, and intramural gas. Periappendicial inflammation includes periappendicial fat stranding, thickening of the lateral conal fascia and mesoappendix, extraluminal fluid abscess formation, lymph node enlargement, and inflammatory thickening of the contiguous structures. Second case is a 24-year-old female presenting with right iliac fossa pain since two days with fever. There is an ill-defined hypodense loculated collection of peripherally enhancing walls noted in the right iliac fossa posterior to the cecum. The appendix could not be defined separately from this collection. The collection shows multiple locules of air and a 12 mm sized appendiculolith within. There is moderate fat stranding and mesentric thickening. Uh, suggestive of appendicular perforation with abscess formation and an appendicular lith within. Third is a 38-year-old male presenting with mild RIF pain and palpable lump. We can see that there is a tubular, well-defined, homogeneously hypodense cystic lesion arising from the cecum in the right iliac fossa, from which the appendix is not seen separately. Few foci have curvilinear neural calcifications noted at its base, and its walls show mild post-contrast enhancement on delayed phases. There was no surrounding fat stranding or lymphadenopathy or solid components within this. Suggestive of mucosal of appendix. Mucosal of appendix results from obstructive dilatation of the appendix caused by intraluminal accumulation of the mucoid material without any periappendicial inflammation or abscess and may show curvilinear or punctate calcification. Next is the 61-year-old male presenting with RIF pain and discharging sinus. We can see that there is a low attenuation cystic lesion involving the appendix and the base of cecum and IC junction with a large well-defined hypodense collection noted in the right iliopsoas muscle extending into the right inguinal region. It extends through the subcutaneous plane and skin with an external opening into the right inguinal region through a discharging sinus tract. It shows thick irregular walls and incomplete enhancing septae within it. There are also multiple variable size low attenuation regions seen in the periapatic, perisplenic, and bilateral subdiaphragmatic regions, causing scalloping of the liver and splenic capsular surface. Uh, the diagnosis given was a mucinous neoplasm of the appendix with pseudomyxoma peritoni and infiltration into the right psoas muscle with a discharging sinus. 
mucinous neoplasms of the appendix the epithelial tumors of the appendix that produce mucin they represent a spectrum of malignant potential and are the most common cause of pseudomyxoma peritoneal next is a case of a 42 year old male presenting with rif pain and burning maturation an obstructive calculus is seen in the right vesicouretric junction causing mild hydronephrosis and entire hydroureter uretric colic usually occurs as a result of obstruction of the urinary tract by calculi at the narrowest anatomical areas of the ureter next is a case of a 61 year old male presenting with rif pain and tenderness we can see that there's a well defined outpouching noted arising from the medial ball of the cecum slash proximal ascending colon with fluid and air contents within abnormal wall thickening and enhancement and moderate fat stranding suggestive of diverticulitis diverticulitis is a complication of colonic diverticulosis and is usually seen in elderly patients on imaging, it, it is usually characterized by focal fat stranding adjacent to the colonic diverticulum. A small amount of extraluminal fluid and gas locules may be present. Next is the case of a 51-year-old presenting with RIF pain. CT shows a small fat attenuation area adjacent to the right colon with a hyperdense halo and round hyperdense focus in center, suggestive of ediploic appendagitis. It is an uncommon condition caused by inflammation, torsion, and ischemia of the epiploid appendage. Other possible findings include focal thickening of the adjacent bowel infiltration of mesenteric fat and focal thickening of the surrounding peritoneum. Next is the case of a 32-year-old female presenting with RIF pain in which we can see that there's a focal area of fat standing in the right lower quadrant adjacent to the anti-mesenteric border of the cecum with no associated bowel wall thickening suggestive of a mental impact. It is a rare condition in which the segmental infarction of the of some portion of the omentum. CT features include well circumscribed region of inflamed omental fat with haziness and streak like areas. Next is a 17 year old female presenting with RIF pain and vomiting. You can see that there's enlarged right ovary with peripheral displacement of follicles showing heterogeneous patchy enhancement and twisting of the ovarian pedicle, suggestive of ovarian torsion. Ovarian torsion occurs when the ovary rotates around its uh, supporting ligaments with a classic whirlpool sign seen between the uterus and the ovary comprising of the fallopian tube, mesosalpings and vessels. Additionally, uh, due to the fluid and edema, it expands the central stroma, displacing the follicles peripherally. Next is a case of a 54-year-old male presenting with RIF pain. There is a bowel within bowel configuration noted involving the distal ileum and cecum with the appearance of a target sign suggestive of intussusception. Polypoidal soft tissue enhancing lesions were seen as its lead point. Uh, intussusception occurs when one segment of the bowel is pulled into itself or a neighboring loop of the bowel by peristalsis. It is most commonly seen in children. And when occurring in adult population, there's usually a focal lesion with, which acts as a lead point. Next is a case of a normal vaginal delivery, complicated by retained placenta, requiring manual extraction. Now, five days postpartum with persistent fever despite antibiotics and right iliac posa pain. Uh, there is a dilated tubular structure with peripherally enhancing walls and central hypodense complete non-enhancing filling defect throughout its course that appears to arise from the right ovary and join the inferior vena cava, suggestive of a complete lumen occluding long segment thrombosis of the right ovarian slash gonadal vein. The thrombus extends into the intrarenal inferior vena cava, causing 50 to 55% luminal stenosis, suggestive of partial uh, thrombosis, right ovarian vein thrombosis extending into the AVC. Ovarian vein thrombosis most commonly occurs in postpartum patients and can result in pulmonary emboli. Uh, these were the results displayed. In conclusion, the availability of CT for the immediate investigation of right lower quadrant pain will help the surgeon to quickly differentiate between ileocecal pathology and extra renal tract gastrointestinal pathology mimicking ileocecal pathology. MDCT can be effectively used in the preoperative evaluation of appendicitis and provides high accuracy for detecting its complications and other incidental findings rather than appendicitis causing right lower quadrant pain, guiding the treating physicians for the proper management of these patients. Thank you.